is your ultimate guide to Mortal Kombat 1 and everything you need to know to get better, learn all the skills and tech that's in the game, and of course improve your entire skill set. Subscribe here for more fighting game content and let's get into it. Also go ahead and pause your screen right here because this is going to be the universal language that we use so that everybody who's watching can understand what we're saying. So I'm going to keep it real with you guys. The first thing you're going to want to do is of course simply find a character. I've been a rated main since MK9 so my loyalty has gone nowhere and I am still a rated main but after playing all the characters I found that I really love Geras, Sandel, Lee Mei. So that's the first thing I recommend is just play around with the characters because you'll never know who you actually like if you don't try them and go through their move list and just mess around with their strings, mess around with their special moves, see what feels right, maybe see what combos you can come up with. It might surprise you what characters you click with and who you might end up maining. Now once you found a character, I know that's dumb, but once you found a character, the next thing you want to do is look for the characters overheads and lows because that's how you can open your opponent up for combos and start from there. So for an example here for Raiden, we have our overhead with our 4-3-4. That's an overhead. So if our opponent is blocking low, meaning they're crouch blocking like this. So you'll see here for an example, if our opponent's crouch blocking and we just like, we can't do our lows, we can't do anything, we throw in the overhead option, that's gonna hit. Now we can do our combo. But vice versa, if we do that move and they're blocking high, it's not gonna hit, then we're gonna get punished. So make sure you watch that, but understand your character's overhead and lows, what's punishable, what you might not wanna throw out there. And with Raiden, for an example, we have our forward four, three, four combo. That's gonna be three lows in a row. So again, if our opponent is blocking high, we can throw that out there. Not only does Mortal Kombat have overhead and lows, but they also have things such as highs and mids. Now, what's the difference there? Neither one of those will hit overhead or low, of course, but the biggest thing you'll see is our high if our opponent's crouching, the high move won't actually hit our opponent. It's just going to go right over their head. Meaning if we start a combo with a high and we miss, our opponent can then uppercut us and now we're punished. But a mid that actually hits your crouching opponent. So you also want to go through your moveset and say, okay, what's a high, what's a mid? I like mids a lot because that actually will hit your opponent standing or crouching. So if they try to like crouch and uppercut you or punish you or get away from a grab, a mid will hit them and stop them right in their tracks. So lows and overheads, those are openers, but mids are kind of like a, a stopping point. Like, nope, you're not going to do anything here. It's going to sound so dumb, but I'm being dead serious here. You need to learn how to block. Because as soon as you learn how to block, then you know how to punish your opponent. Meaning if you block your opponent's string or their special move it's likely unsafe that's where you want to go and learn what moves are unsafe or safe and honestly a lot of that just comes with time unless you really want to sit down for hours and really go through all the characters and see their movesets see their frame data but for an example we're going to block Liu Kang's string here and then punish him and you'll see what you can do with the reversal like that So you see, we blocked our opponent's string and then we just went right in for the punish and we were able to get a really good combo off just from blocking. It's a fighting game, guys. I'm serious. Like the, there's so many people out there that just don't block and then get mad that they're losing. And it's like, if you would have just blocked that, you could have easily punished me. So that's not really my fault. You should have blocked that. So start blocking. It's a fighting game. You got to fight. You got to block. You got to grab. Especially if you see your opponent blocking a lot and they're calling your moves or calling the lows or calling the overheads and you just cannot get in there. Go for the grab. Like there have been so many instances where I've either won around and got out of the corner or got out of a bad situation just because I was grabbing. I'm not saying spam grab, but it's an amazing tool to get you out of certain situations and make your opponent not want to just start blocking like crazy. Then they try to be aggressive. Then they mess up. Boom, you block, boom, punish, boom, combo. Now with grabs, another thing you might want to learn is how to escape the grabs. And that's a bit tricky because in Mortal Kombat, we have two forms of grabs. We have our back grab and we have our forward grab. And unfortunately, there's no one button to escape out of a grab. It kind of sucks. I'm not gonna lie to you, even I hate it, but you have to guess because it's gotta be so quick and how you do, how you escape the grabs. So on a normal grab, you gotta press forward and one or two to escape the grab. It can be hard to really get down. And then on a forward grab, you gotta press three or four forward to escape that grab. So it's hard to really get down. And, on, and again, it's a very unfortunate. You gotta kind of guess, okay, I see they grab me and you gotta instantly decide, am I gonna press one or three typically to escape this grab? And that's escaping grabs. And even I'm still learning how to get better at doing that. But typically you'll see your opponent start to grab you a certain way, like forward or back most of the time and say, okay, they're doing a lot of back grabs. So chances are their next grab is gonna be a back grab. So I'll press one or two and forward during that I grab to escape it hopefully it's a guessing game but that's also fighting games you gotta guess overhead or low and whatever now i'm not gonna go over the entirety of how to do basic combos in mortal kombat i've already given a great tutorial in this video right here you're gonna see it there go click on that watch that how to do combos video and then come back and you know kind of start off right here so let's say you know how to do basic combos or you watch that video and you're back what's up once you know how to do basic combos you gotta start stringing all of these strategies together like doing your combos learning how when to block how and when to punish exactly 
exactly what's safe, what's not safe, when you might want to sprinkle in your grabs. You see how all these intricate details just come together to create a fighting game, but there's more. I've had a lot of people comment and ask me, how do I enhance special moves? We have special moves like down forward two here, and we can't really do much off of that by itself. But if you enhance it like this, like you use a meter, they pop them up for a combo extender and a lot of special moves are like that or they change their properties. Like for an example, our fly move here, when we do the enhance, we gain armor on it, we can go through a hit. Our down back three also changes properties when it's enhanced like this. See, that's a bit different. So the first thing you're gonna wanna see is kind of what properties change when you enhance a special move. Is it gonna be a pop-up of sorts? Does it just do more damage? Is it a completely different move? Things happen like that. So you wanna go through and see what your special moves are actually doing when enhanced, but how do you enhance a special move? So we have our block button, right? You have to press block and your input at the same exact time to enhance a special move. So honestly, you're kind of committing to the enhancement and say, okay, I'm either gonna hit this, like in a combo, or if they're blocking, you're just gonna throw it out there, you're hoping that it hits, right? But we have our down forward two combo here. If we want to enhance that, we press two and block at the same exact time. It'll be a down forward and then two and block at the same time, like this. So there's no time difference. You don't you don't press two and then block. You press them at the exact same time. And that's any special move. Down back three, if we want to enhance that, it's down back three plus block. Different move. Keep in mind, most special moves use an entire meter of your meter down the bottom left corner. And some special moves would enhance even use two. So you want to be aware of your resources, especially your bar. Kind of going back to the blocking segment here. It's not really about blocking, but about punishing your opponent because a lot of people just go free willy nilly and say, why am I not, what am I doing? Why can I, and it's like, dude, chill. Fighting games can be a bit more methodical, meaning you have to start reading your opponent and seeing their habits. If I was fighting you and I started to do this move a lot, that's an overhead and it's unsafe. You saw this kick, you're like, okay, well then the spinning kicks is coming next. That's an overhead. You're gonna wanna block high and then punish me when I miss. You see what I'm saying? Like no matter who you're fighting, they're gonna have certain habits. Whether it be projectiles or teleporting, using their cameo, doing a lot of overheads, whatever it may be, you really have to adapt in the moment. And when someone says read your opponent, that means guess, but it's a very educated guess, right? Like, okay, my opponent's doing a lot of this. So chances are they're gonna do that again. Oh, there it is. I'm gonna block high and then punish them. Like it's not really guessing. You're just more or less seeing their repeating habits. You know what I'm saying? Another thing you wanna get the hang of is wake up attack. For those that don't know what wake up attack is, when you are knocked down, you have the ability to wake up doing a special move. Meaning you're like coming off the ground into your special move. So it's just very quick. Kinda like this, we can wake up down forward two. And that's a wake up attack, sure, but every character has some form of an armored special move when enhanced. And Raiden's, for example, is our back forward three enhanced. Yeah. That gains armor, so it's a great wake up option. So if our opponent's trying to pressure us while we're down, we'll wake up with that attack, gain armor, go through a hit, and then kind of reset the fight, you know? And here's how that might look. So learn how to wake up with either a special move, an armored special move, or honestly, no wake up at all. Because once you start doing it over and over again, your opponent's gonna see that, bait out the wake up attack, so you do it, they're gonna block it, then punish you. So if you see your opponent reading you, then you gotta read them and not do a special attack wake up. See, there's just so many moving parts to a fighting game. It's a lot of in the moment decisions. A lot of micro decisions are happening in like the span of like 20 seconds, you know, it's crazy. Now, once you have learned slash mastered your character as a basic character, and you wanna level up your gameplay even more, that is where more Mortal Kombat 1 is super unique and they have cameo fighters and you're gonna wanna mess around with all of them because there are so many amazing options and a lot of cameo fighters go better with other fighters in my opinion. Some cameos offer tools that benefit all characters. For an example, as a Raiden main, I actually enjoy using Scorpion because Raiden doesn't have a crazy amount of overheads and Scorpion offers an overhead attack. So I like the ability to have a mix up going for the low and then the overhead. I also enjoy the combo extension we get from Scorpion. And if I'm in a pickle, I can have the armored pullback full screen move reset where I can bait out a projectile and teleport and punish my opponent from there. That's because that's the way I like to play. I also really enjoy using Cyrax and Sector and Darius. There are so many good cameos. That would be like the last thing I worry about, honestly, is like a lot of people like come into the game and start trying to use cameos off the get go. And it's just a lot of things to worry about and stress you out, especially in the beginning. Really master your character, master your combos and say, okay, I can do this by myself. That's fun. And then of course, start to implement your cameos as you go along and that'll really level up your gameplay. Once you do that, you're gonna see how all of these things, all of these tips kind of weave together to give you that awesome foundation to build off of and just go from there. You can't go into a game like Mortal Kombat and just start pressing buttons and hopefully things hit. Or I'll try to grab, try to throw stuff out. You just can't do it. It's really fast paced, but if you take it one step at a time, you're gonna start to see, okay, I'm gonna raid my opponent here. Oh, they whiffed, I'm gonna grab. If they're blocking low a lot, I'm gonna go for the overhead attack. 
back, you'll start to see these things and build your skills as you keep practicing and keep playing. Also, quick side note, the word cancel, you might hear that a lot during this tutorial. Uh, the word cancel, so if I say, oh, this stream cancels, that means just goes into, like this stream can go into this special move. But we in the fighting game community use the term cancel because you're essentially canceling that stream into something else. Might not make sense, but that's what it means. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and just pause your screen and go to move list and see your strings. These are combo strings right here. As you see for Raiden, we have one, two, three. We have two, four, two. We have two, four, two, one. You have these combo strings. And a lot of the time, believe it or not, these combo strings can then cancel into specials. So we have our special moves. You know, we have down forward one. We got down back two. So you'll mess with your character strings and their specials. But how do you combo? How do you piece these together? And where do you start? I would start off with simple combo strings and just see what can cancel like what can go into something else so for an example i know that raiden has this four two two four combo okay so what you might do is go okay i like this four two two four that's a low and i think my opponent pops up a little bit i wonder if i can do a special move after that i can't do another string after that surely uh but maybe i could do a special move that that's kind of the mindset you are going to have to have is you're going to want to question all of your strings all your normals your specials so with that mindset i'm going to go okay i wonder if i can do my down back three after that and catch them before they fall and hit the ground from my forward two two four combo let's go ahead and give that a shot four two two four down back three Oh, it does. I catch them and pull them in before they fall. Okay, that right there is a combo. Now, the timing for new players might be a bit weird, especially for NRS games. And Mortal Kombat's no different. So, a lot of time you might think do 4, 2, 2, 4, wait, and then do down, back, 3. As you see, it kind of comes out a bit later. The way you do your inputs matters, especially in these kind of games. And specifically for Mortal Kombat, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do your input all in a row. Like, you're not gonna pause and do 4, 2, 2, 4, wait a second, then do down back three. You're gonna do it as if it was one entire string. Like as if you're dialing a phone, you know, beep, boop, boop, beep. You're doing four, two, two, four, down back three. I was done doing down back three before my combo string actually ended. The game recognized I did down back three and did it as soon as it could. That is the main source of comboing in Mortal Kombat. Is you're kind of hoping that it hits, you're doing the input in anticipation that my low move here is gonna hit and just doing the input of the special move that you wanna do. So now I'm gonna do, okay, so that can go into each other. I wonder if I can do forward two, two, four, and then my down forward two move here, my grab. Does that move connect, you know? Oh, it does. And I know after playing around with my special moves, I enhance my down forward two, and that's a pop-up. So I wonder if I do my forward two, two, four, the low kick into my enhanced grab, my down forward two, then they bounce. I can catch them with another something else. Maybe, maybe a different string or another special move. You see where the combos start to form in your head. And this applies to all the characters in the game, you know, with their special moves. A lot of character special moves enhance, allow for combo extension. So to showcase that four, two, two, four, enhance down forward two, then maybe three, that did hit. So I wonder if I can do three and then just another grab. Let's try to do that all together now. Enhance the down forward two, dash three down forward two. Okay, that's a combo. And that whole combo stemmed from me questioning, could I do a special move after this four, two, two, four? And the answer was yes, but again, the input timing might be a bit weird for new players. Again, you just gotta do it in one simple, one single sequence. You ain't gonna pause. You're gonna do four, two, two, four, down forward two. There you go. Now you notice that we dashed in that combo. So yes, there are some combos that might require you to dash and that can also be a bit hard to get used to. If you see your opponent being popped up and you're kind of far away to really do anything, chances are you'll probably have time to dash and then do the input. Dashing inside of combos can be a bit hard to get used to at first, especially when you're doing combos that require you to dash twice. Like this combo here, we got to dash forward, hit him with three, then do that again. Then I'll dash forward, do it again. So you see how we dash twice in a combo? That can also be hard to get used to at the beginning. So start simple. Start with a combo where you don't have to dash. Get that combo down. So that way when you run into combos where you might need to dash, you're okay with it. You'll try this process with some strings that characters have. Like for an example, Raiden's one, two, three string here. And you might question that, okay, well does this one combo? I see they kind of went forward a little bit. Do I have time to do, you know, maybe a special move like my fly move? Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, nope, nothing's going through. I wonder if this is really cancelable or not. I'm trying different timings. 
Ugh, nothing's going through. And that's okay. Sometimes strings are not cancelable. Sometimes strings are meant to be placed at the end of a combo rather than the middle or the beginning. And it's up to you to find out what strings of yours are going to be in that place. Are they going to be at the end, the beginning? You'll see a lot of characters have a string or a combo or a move that has a pop-up. So Raiden's 3-4 combo, that pops my opponent pretty high. And Mortal Kombat is unique and they have air combos. So I know Raiden has 2-2-4 two, two, in the air. So I'm going to do that 3-4 combo jump 2-2-4. Two, two, Okay, that alone by itself is a combo, but I also saw my opponent bounced even from that extension. Could I grab them with my maybe my down forward two? Let's try that. So three, four jump, two, two, four, then down forward two when I land. No, but I think I told I think I could hit. I think I could. It does grab. I just gotta be a bit quicker. So just because something doesn't land the very first time doesn't mean that it can never land. You gotta practice. Honestly, that's the beauty of fighting games. You're gonna practice and lab and practice and practice and practice and think something's gonna hit. It doesn't hit, but you're, you're like totally sure it could. Just keep trying it and chances are it'll probably hit. And then you're gonna think, okay, that does hit. I can actually enhance that and continue it from there. Oh my gosh. So then you will, right? You're gonna do three, four, jump, two, two, four, enhance your grab when you land. And then what, dash three, and then down back four, two again. Like you see how the combos are starting to form in your head once you get the specials enhancing down, once you get the dashing down. But again, you wanna start small, right? You wanna start simple. So the first things you might do is just three, four, jump, two, two, four. Once you land that, go from there. My rule of thumb is once you can land a combo three times in a row consecutively without messing up, that means you got it down. Personally, I will not finish, I will not stop doing a combo unless I've done it three times in a row without messing up. Another side note, you're gonna find that you're gonna be using some strings for your character's moveset a lot more than others because of their ability to combo into special moves, other stuff. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. Even as a Raiden main, I don't use his uh, one, two, three combo that often. I'm using 242. Two. I'm using 4224 two, four a lot. I'm using my 34 and then my forward 34 quite a bit. You're going to find that sometimes strings, even though they might they might be good combo ender, you probably are going to be ending your combos with a special move or something like that. There are going to be combos that just sit there and just gather dust. You're not going to be using those strings as often as others if ever and that's okay. And just mess around, try to go different combo routes. So when I do my 434, that's a pop-up. Could I dash and do something else? Do I want to do just a special move after that, like my down back three? Like, how can I continue these combos as much as possible? And you're going to experiment a lot. You're going to practice a lot. You're not going to be a pro in one single day, and that's okay. And sometimes you're going to find, even you know, even personally, you're going to go, okay, I like this character's moveset, but, but after getting their combos down, I'm just not vibing with this character. I might want to try somebody else. And that's totally okay, too. That's also the beauty is like, for the fighting game. You're going to find that you might click with this character, and you never thought about playing that character character but once you play around with some other characters you're gonna go oh i actually really like baraka he's really cool i like his moveset and i can do his combos pretty well like i want to play rain really bad but me and rain in this game just don't click and that's okay now another side note about mortal kombat 1 mortal kombat 1 is kind of unique well really unique because they have the cameo system and a lot of cameos you use are going to allow for even more combo extension but i'll tell you right now as a beginner as a new player maybe Worry about cameos, sure, but don't make them your first initial thought. Like, get used to comboing with your character alone before you really try to implement cameos. That's the best way that I found. If you try to put cameos in at the very beginning, it's gonna be very overwhelming. Once you master your character as a base character, then you can start to implement your cameos and go, oh, okay, I can do this combo, no problem. I wonder if I implement my cameo here, could I continue my combo after my cameo hits? Now, for an example, I like to use Jax in my combos for Raiden, because Jax will actually grab my opponent from the air, break their back and throw them off of him. And during that throw, Raiden can do other special moves. So like my down forward two i'll call in jacks he'll grab them from there i can do another special move like so i'll call in jacks and then dig back forward three you see all that kind of went together me jacks grabbed them then i flew and hit them but you might not want to worry about that first thing and then as you just get more and more you'll start to string all of these things together just like this There's a reason why my name is One Step, because I believe in taking it one step at a time, and that is my philosophy, especially for fighting games. You really do have to take it one step at a time, because if you try just full force running, you're gonna trip, it's not gonna feel good. You gotta go from the very beginning basics. Okay, four, two, two, four, down, forward, three. That is a five hit combo, but it's still a combo. And that is the base foundation that you wanna build off of and just go from there. The timing can be a bit weird, just practice and get, you'll get used to it, I swear. The cameos can be hard to get used to, but 
but again, just practice and you'll get used to it. All of this requires practice. If you picked up the piano today, you would not be a pro piano player by next week. And that's okay. But if you play the piano almost every day for a long time, sure enough, soon enough, you're gonna be a really good piano player. You see what I'm saying? Brutalities in Mortal Kombat 1 can seem a bit weird at first because you're thinking like, oh, fatality. I, all I gotta do is an input, you know, forward, back, forward, one at the end of the fight, and then I'll do a fatality. But what and how do I do a brutality? I am gonna be using Raiden today to show you guys examples because I had the most brutalities unlocked for him to show you more examples so that way you can get a really good grasp on how to do brutality. So the first thing you want to know is brutalities most of the time have requirements. I mean, first of all, every brutality's requirement is going to have at least one. And that requirement is the hit that is the brutality is going to be the last hit of the match. That's how you end fights. You need your brutality move for an example for Raiden, our down back three here. We have to make sure whether we're doing it in a combo or standalone, that the last move of the fight comes from that move. That's the first requirement for all brutalities. But as you see here for our simple uppercut brutality, the classic classic brutality we have to hold two during the hit and of course the other requirement the final hit must be from down two which is the uppercut so if you're in a fight and you're at this point and you're like oh my gosh my opponent has so low of health that surely if i do an uppercut it'll be the last hit of the match that's the first thought process you have to have you have to think okay will my combo be enough to finish off my opponent's health to zero allowing me to end the fight in a brutality and in this case i would say duh yeah of course because for those that don't know uppercuts do 140 damage and you can see your opponent's health up there so if you see your opponent at 140 or less you can assume okay my uppercut's at least going to be the last hit of the match and all i gotta do is hold the triangle button the two button during that hit so right here we're in a fight and you're gonna see that our opponent's health is less than 140 so i know automatically okay my uppercut is gonna be enough for the final hit all i gotta do is hold the button and it's gonna do a brutality and here's how that might look all we did was hold the button down as the uppercut was going, the other side note, your opponent cannot be in the air for that brutality. Like for an example, if they're falling down from the air from an air combo, you can't do the uppercut from the air. They'll just go flying. They have to be on the ground. It doesn't say that in the description. I wish it would for the advanced view and show the requirements. Like say, hey, opponent has to be standing, but that's just a small note. So our opponent right now is less than 140 damage. So I know that if I end with the uppercut move and hold it, it'll do brutality. But if you, again, if you just to showcase you, if you try doing that in a combo when they're falling, it's not gonna happen and here's what i mean see they're just falling from the air it's not gonna do anything as you can see here most of the brutalities you're gonna see have the requirement of being the last hit but also other requirements such as this one saying press one or two rapidly six times during the hit or this one just holding up during the hit or this one holding down during the hit there's gonna be some form of requirement to do during the hit usually along with it being the last hit of the match sometimes they'll have extra requirements like this one being must be a jump distance away and hold back during the hit so sometimes brutalities are a bit harder to pull off they're a bit more situational especially in a fight when you have an opponent fighting back and everything trying to plan out and say okay i need to be jump distance away this needs to be the final hit i gotta hold back during this hit it can be a lot at first and you're not gonna hit it every game this brutality is more situational than all of the others so you'll probably find that you can do some brutalities more of the time than others for an example this overload our down back three all we gotta do is hold up during this hit make sure it's the last hit and we'll do a brutality and to show you how that one looks so to show an example we can actually use that move in a combo here it is as long as as we know that does 150 damage and we can go okay as long as our opponent's beneath that and we know it's gonna be our last hit we can make that our brutality we can even do that in longer combos as well like this See how that last hit was our down back three? You can make that a brutality. So our opponent's at 170 health, so I know if I do a long combo, end with that move and hold up during it, as long as it's the last move that I do, it'll be a brutality. So here's how that might look in a long combo. Okay, we're gonna, no, we know it's the last hit. We're gonna do our combo here. And last hit, hold up, and in doing so, the brutality will activate. So you saw how the fight technically ended during my combo. Long combo, okay, we're gonna, no, we just last hit. We're gonna do our combo here. But I was able to still continue to make sure that the last hit of the fight was technically my down back three electric field move. And then in doing so, hold up and the brutality activates. Now the timing on holding up during that move is a bit weird at first. You have to find your rhythm. Like I found that's not wise to like do down back three, hold up. 
I mean, you probably could, but I found it best to do down back three, let it hit, and then press up and hold it. And the brutality for me activates almost every single time. But when they have a requirement like that, you want to mess around with the timing and you'll get it down. Showing you something that I found out the other day and I just could not believe it's actually part of the game. A lot of you might be going, well, yeah, one step, we all knew this. But honestly, it is so crazy. So we all know that any fighting game, you got overheads, lows, you got blocking, but you also have grabbing. And we also know that throws are unblockable. Like you, you can't block these. You can duck the grabs, yes. But the second you're like a centimeter up, you're gonna get grabbed. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, two things. First, Mortal Kombat is very distinct in the way they do their throws and the way they have two throws. They have forward throws and they have back throws or neutral throws. Now, the reason why that matters is because in most fighting games, the way to counter a throw or like take a throw or get out of a throw is to simply just throw back. Like you just press your throw button and you'll escape the throw. Mortal Kombat is a bit different. They say, well, we have two throws. So there's actually two different ways to escape the throw. So if I want to escape, of, let's say a neutral or back throw, I have to press one or three right when the throw starts and then I can escape it like this. See, I press one. Press one again, I'm gonna try three. I'm gonna escape the throw, okay? But if he's gonna do a fourth throw, I gotta press two or four. So he's gonna try again, I'm gonna press, press four, okay. So first of all, throws are very powerful in that sense because if I grab you, then you have to guess, do I, have to, do I press one or do I press two? Do I press three, do I press four to get out of this throw? And if you guess wrong, well, then the throw is going through. And that can be frustrating, like if you really do call the throw, like okay, they're gonna throw right now, I'm gonna counter it, and you press one, but they actually did the forward throw, and you get thrown anyways, even though you called it. That can be frustrating. But the most frustrating thing about throws in Mortal Kombat that again, I just learned the other day that I had to make a video on because it's just wild to me. And this just further proves the point that throws can absolutely win game. They can change the tide of a fight and are honestly kind of OP in my opinion because like you can't just escape it. I learned and I'm teaching you right now that you actually, you can't be blocking to take a throw. Like if you're blocking and they grab you, you you can't take it, you can't counter, you can't escape the throw. And you just saw how easy I was escaping these throws a minute ago. I'm gonna show you the exact same thing, but while I am blocking, and you'll see that we're not gonna escape it. So I'm gonna block, I'm gonna smash one, I'm not gonna take the throw. Let's try it again. Nope, not happening. Let's try it one more time. Nope, not happening. So this is the crazy thing about throws, is like not only is it a 50-50 guess on like what I push to escape the throw, but now, even if I'm gonna call, I have to let go of block if you're blocking and then guess. So like that is just so broken, because if I see my opponent blocking, I'm gonna throw them and then no matter what, if they guessed or not, the throw is gonna happen. That's crazy to me, like you can't be blocking to escape throws? Then what's the point of blocking? I'm like, okay, I'm gonna block this, they're gonna grab me, I'm gonna escape the throw, wrong. The throw's gonna happen, just let it happen. Like, okay, I guess. So not only are throws broken in that aspect that it's a 50-50 guess, but also they're unescapable if your opponent's blocking, which is BS in my opinion. Another thing about throws is they actually do way more damage if you punish an up block from an opponent. So for an example, if we throw Garrus right here, right? We do our throw, it does like a what? 110, I think it is. Yeah, 110 damage. But if we bait out the up block and then you grab your opponent, look what the damage is off of a throw. So there's the up block, we'll just grab them. It's a throw punish, you'll see this here. 176 damage just from punishing an up lock off of a grab. We're adding 60 extra damage to just a throw. So what I'm trying to say here is you absolutely need to be implementing throws in your gameplay. And don't let the scrubs that they're saying like, don't, don't just spam throw. It's part of the game. You gotta do it sometimes, especially if your opponent's calling on your blocks and whatever. Throwing has been part of fighting games since literally the dawn of fighting games. So utilize them. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I really don't like that you can't be blocking and escape the throw. That is so frustrating. Am I gonna use it? Absolutely. Absolutely, and you should too. This technique has helped me win so many more fights in Mortal Kombat 1, and today I'm teaching you how to do it so you can win more and be a better fighter. So as we know in fighting games, a big portion of your offense is your defense, and that is blocking. And in any fighting game, you can block high and you can block low. We know that, or at least I hope you know that. We have moves that are overheads. So in order to block those, you block high, you just stand and block. We have lows, in order to block though, you crouch block. And we know the opposite's there, if I crouch block and get hit with an overhead, I'm gonna get hit by the overhead. And if I'm stand blocking, then I'm gonna get hit by some low move. That's the beauty of fighting games, you try to go for the mix up, stuff like that. Well, Mortal Kombat 1 has introduced a new blocking technique called up block. And it is not being talked about enough on Twitter, on Reddit, even on YouTube, no one's really talking about it. And I know some of you guys in the comments might be like, whoa, one step, so 
Sonic Fox on Twitter told us all about that. I don't care. No one's really talking about it and you guys need to be utilizing. I'm seriously, my win rate has gone way up since utilizing this and using it effectively. So to quickly go over it, we have stand block like this. Now, this will block overheads, yes, but what you can do is you can hold up and block. You see how our blocking stance changed there. So I'll show you again, we up block. Now the thing you need to know about up block is you cannot just hold it. I'm holding up. As you see, we have to go down, meaning it has active and recovery frames. And what recovery frames means for you as the fighter is if you miss this up block or your opponent guesses it, you have that amount of frames before you come back down to stand block and then crouch to low block. So a lot of times if I see it coming, I'll jump in for the overhead, they'll up block. I won't do anything and I'll go for the low move free combo for me. It's also got startup frames, so it's not instant. So I'm gonna press up. It's really fast, yes, but there still is startup frames on it. Someone in the comments is gonna be like, actually there's only three frames on startup and like five, I don't care. The point is it's got frame data and you'll get used to the timing of it as you use it more. But what this does for you is it's pretty similar to a flawless block for an example. On the ground, it stops your opponent in their tracks and their combo strings. So if you up block a jump in for an example, right? So for me, I like to jump in and then three, four, and that's an overhead starter and I have a combo to start from there. But if I get up blocked on that, I can't do my three. It just it stops me in my tracks. So I'll show you how that actually looks and how it feels to actually do it. So we're gonna have Scorpion jump in. We're not gonna up block, we're just gonna block. And you'll see we can't really punish him because he's gonna block before we can hit him. Here's how that looks. We stop and we try to go for the hit, but we're just not gonna do anything because he can block before we can actually punish him. I'm trying and I'm smashing my lightest attack, you know, like, smash, 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 nothing. But if we up block and we can hit him before he can recover from being up blocked, giving us our turn back and a free combo. Four hundred twenty damage off of an up block. I'm simply just blocking an overhead. Now keep that in mind. That only works on overheads. Now doing an up block on the ground, you still will block your highs and mids. Yes. So we're gonna up block here. You see, we still block the high attacks. So besides a jump in, those are always overheads. Knowing what your opponent's moves are that are overheads is gonna be a huge advantage, you know, versus like Baraka or Johnny or even Raiden. Sub-Zero and his back two. Rain and his two hits that are overhead as well for starter. You can up block all of those and punish your opponent accordingly. I'm not joking you, man. This has helped me win so many more fights. But at the higher skill ceilings, you'll notice that they will bait out the up block so that way they can go for the low attack. So be careful of that. Don't rely on it all the time, but man, and it's an amazing tool. There's a really cool mechanic in Mortal Kombat 1 that no one's talking about. It's a mechanic called Last Breath. And what Last Breath does, it actually allows you to save yourself so you don't die off of a single hit of chip damage near the end of a fight. And here's what I mean by that. Let's say your opponent right here is at, you know, 9% health left. Well, even if they block our uppercut, you're gonna see here, our uppercut does, tw our uppercut does 21 damage even on block. So essentially in a real fight, that right there would have killed our opponent even if they were blocking it. But what Last Breath does, it consumes an entire bar your offensive bar down there it consumes an entire bar and allows you to take no chip damage off a single hit let me repeat that for you it consumes an entire bar and allows you to take no chip damage off of a single hit near the end of the match if you're gonna die from it and this is not something you can just like turn off or on you it's just part of the game so whether you want to use the meter or not I mean to be fair if you were to not use it you would just die so it's gonna use it for you anyways it uses that bar you have and gives you one hit of like no chip damage armor in a way and I'll show you how that looks in an actual fight. Subscribe here for more fighting game content, by the way, if you're enjoying yourself. And as you can see here, our opponent is at like, what, 30 damage left, low poke. They are one hit away from dying, whether it's chip or not. Because as you saw, our blocked uppercut does 20 damage. So a blocked uppercut right now will kill our opponent, even if they were to block it. But they got three bars, as you can see right down there. So what that means for our opponent, or you maybe as the player, is you have three last breaths chances. So our opponent's gonna block here. We're gonna do an uppercut. I'll show you how that looks. Oh, they looks. Oh, they should have died, but they did not. But it did do a little bit of chip damage, but did not kill them. So they got two bars left. Let's just do it again. Oh, they're, they're, they have one more bar left. And as you see, we're gonna do it one last time. That's their last breath. Last time. Meaning they have 
nothing else to save them they got to be offensive at this point and even if they're blocking we're gonna do a simple just one punch and they are done they that that's game so if you've ever had one bar or something at the very end of the match and you get hit and you wonder where did my bar go i swear i had a bar it likely got used by last breath and that's how the mechanic works again if it didn't work you would just die off chip damage so it's just a small way to just not die off of a single hit near the end of the fight i'm gonna quickly show you what it is and then of course how to do it i say secret because like no one really knows about it i've asked plenty of people People, they don't know about it and out of all my fights online a ton of fights online I've never seen one person do it I think one because it's kind of expensive and you'll see why but in the pinch of a fight it's gonna be super useful so it is a punishing slash counter tech off of an uppercut most of the time you cannot you can't combo off an uppercut no matter what I do I am not gonna combo off an uppercut nobody's gonna but this new tech in Mortal Kombat 1 because it's new to Mortal Kombat 1 allows you to do so they allow you to combo off of a punish or a counter uppercut so keep that of mind it does have to be a punish or a counter you can't just like uppercut them and then do it it has to be a punish or a counter and any character can do this text let me show you what it looks like first of all off of a punish and a jump in punish as well so first let me show you how it looks from a punish on the ground <laughs> and then i'll show you what it looks like punishing a jump in So after you saw them both on the ground and in the air from a punishing either on the ground, if you duck, uh, you know, let's say a punch and you uppercut them, you can then press up and R1, the block button, at the same time up or diagonally up. I prefer diagonally up because you're going to go towards your opponent to then start a combo. And keep in mind, again, it has to be a punish or a counter. So you have to see the punish or counter icon pop up and it's not instant, meaning you don't have to instantly press up and block at the same time. Like it's not like as soon as you see the punish, press it. Like the timing is a bit weird. It's, it's a bit slower than you might thing because the game is very fast paced in general so once they're in the air that's when you press up and block at the same time you'll kind of slow down time go in the air and allow for a combo now i notice if you do it off of the ground so let's say you do a ground punish you're not gonna go in the air long enough to do a full on air combo or at least in raiden's case i can so i like to jump press one drop press one again and catch them before they drop to the ground then do a special into a combo of sorts here's what i mean you gotta like wait then do it and you see how you're not really in the air that long to do a full-on combo but if we just hit him once in the air then drop then i have time to do a combo from there from jumping attack you know you gotta uppercut him and then wait then do up an r1 then go in the air and do an air combo if you have time for it so like this punish up an r1 combo grab from the ground and go from there. Now, this is a really good tech that I don't think is being utilized that much right now because a lot of people aren't comfortable, you know, doing that. They don't know how to do it first of all. So hopefully this helps you out to learn how to do that. But also it's expensive. It costs two bars of your three so it's like, is it really worth doing it in the middle of a fight? Maybe not in a pinch, maybe. Or if you're going to win the game with it, then yeah, probably. But it's just a bit more expensive than you might want. It costs two full bars. So it's almost the amount that you might use for a breaker. So it's kind of like a breaker. But it's a good way to punish. And it's a good way to combo off of an uppercut. And it will be a bit tricky to get down. I'm not going to lie to you. It took me a little while to really get the timing down with my character. But once you get the timing down off of a jump in and a ground attack, you're going to hit it almost every single time. You're going to understand, you know, the spacing of you and your opponent to understand, okay, can I do a full on air combo or do I just have the space and time to just press one in the air drop and then do a combo from the ground you'll start to really recognize that I recommend going to practice mode and just practicing the crap out of it set your opponent to do a high punch and then toggle it so that way you could they come out you uppercut then up an R1 and you'll start to see the timing on that you'll see the icon go oh and then go for it and then just keep trying it hit and then try to do something and there we go even that right there even that right there was 200 damage better than 140 right so if i'm gonna win the game off that yeah two bars is probably worth it or if they want to jump in from that then go for it and get a good amount of damage just from an uppercut but really decide if that two bars is going to be worth it in the moment again as soon as you see the punish or counter icon pop up wait just a second wait for them to be in the air then press up or you know diagonally up and block at the same time you'll slow down time and get in the air and be able to do a combo it's not being utilized that much right now but i can guarantee you in the future this is going to be a game changer the more and more people that you know decide to use it it's going to turn the tide in a lot of games and i you should probably get good at it right now rather than wait for all the 
pros be like, oh guys, new tech in Mortal Kombat, you're not gonna believe this. You heard it here first, folks. Did you know you can reduce the amount of damage that your opponent's fatal blow does on you simply by mashing your buttons? Like literally press square, triangle, X, Y, B, whatever, just smash them all during the fatal blow and they'll do less damage. So believe me, watch this. So here's our opponent's normal fatal blow. We're not gonna mash at all. And as you see right there, 350 damage, we didn't do anything. Now here's what we're gonna mash the entire time and we're gonna reduce the amount of damage they do. See with mashing, they did 305. So we were able to reduce that damage by 50 damage simply by mashing our buttons during the fatal blow. Now keep in mind, they can mash their buttons back to increase their damage. So it's honestly just a matter of who mashes harder and faster, I guess. The more you know.